welcome to another episode of Earning the Hate. Hey, young people. Man, this is just sickening. Uh, this is definitely going on Earning the Hate. Um, so, this organization, Institute of Justice, um, man, if you want to donate to a good organization, they, they seem like they're doing pretty good work. Um, let's see. Um, 39, retired Marine from Lubbock, Texas, devoted father, two teenagers driving, and the cops stop him and steal his money. This is freaking outrageous. I have the speed turn up to one and a half, so it will seem fast. If you want to go watch their video, comment, like, maybe give them some uh, donations, that would be great, because it seems like they're doing pretty good work. This this video is freaking sickening to me. Here we go. Seizure. The initial traffic stop to the seized money being deposited at the bank. Pulled over outside of Reno by the Nevada Highway Patrol. He was driving to visit his daughters in a small California town just west of Reno. So he's going to California and pulled over in Nevada. By the way, he's pulled over for doing nothing, for driving good. They pulled the pesky citizen over for driving good, which is a unlawful stop in the first place, and then they seized his money. Driving under the speed limit. Yeah, you know, initially I, I thought I was getting pulled over uh, because maybe I had expired tags. I had a rental car. Unfortunately, I had uh, some car trouble, and uh, that was necessary to get a rental car for a uh, short duration uh, for that weekend. I'm doing great. Hey, the reason I'm stopping with a special enforcement campaign going on, we're trying to educate drivers about violations they may not realize they're committing, but we're seeing big increase in crashes out here. First, applaud you on your driving. You drive great. You drive really slow. Applaud you on your driving. You drive great. So you activate your emergency lights. You do a forceful stop. You mandate and take this person into custody, interrupt his day, detain him because he's driving great. Man, ain't law enforcement great? They are all heroes, Rick. Why are you always picking on them? Here's that you're driving, trying to drive safely under the speed limit. I appreciate that. I just want to talk about your following distance, especially around commercial vehicles. The highway patrol officer seems friendly and reasonable at first, even complimenting Stephen's driving. He orders Stephen to exit his vehicle and starts asking him a series of questions unrelated to why he was pulled over. Police often ask questions like this to see if a suspect's story lines up. Don't talk to the cops. Am I free to go? Why am I detained? Are you writing me a ticket or am I free to go? No, you don't have permission to search my car. No, I don't want to talk to you. Come on, dude. You're a vet. Why are you freaking trusting government? If I don't Rick, they're police, and, and in order to, you must be a good guy. You have to support police, even though they're trying to steal your money and freaking put you in jail or, or ruin your freaking life. You got to support law enforcement, Rick. Otherwise, you're a bad guy. Okay. Yeah, you got to tap out your on. <laughs> well, I've got a lot of training. I'm a retired Marine. What do your daughters do, man? Ever been in trouble law enforcement before? When did you leave? Where did you leave? What part of Texas do you think you're buying a house in? What were you doing for work up there? The officer then explains the real reason he pulled Steven over. Hey, why I'm working on this, let me ask you something, this is going to sound kind of weird. Um, part of my job out here is I do what's called highway interdiction. I look for people that are smuggling contraband through our state, across the country, uh, weapons, humans, drugs, illicit currency, things like that. Anything in the vehicle I should be aware of? Okay. No, no firearms? No explosives? Okay. Uh, why is it any of your business if I do or I don't? Why are we having this conversation? Am I free to go? If not, am I under arrest or why am I being detained? Um, is there any drugs in the vehicle? Cocaine? I don't think so. Yeah, I gotta ask all these silly questions, right? Okay. Um, any large amounts of United States currency in the vehicle? What the, any large currency in your vehicle? Now you can't carry cash. I'm telling you people, there has to be a breaking point for tyrannical government and our cops are not our friends. They are government thugs looking for a way to move your money from you to the government so they can get a piece of the pie. Outrageous conduct. Okay, what's that large amount of U.S. currency to you? Okay, so there's over 10,000 in there? Okay, how much money you got in there? Okay, uh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, Would you give me permission to search your vehicle today? No, no, never consent when dealing with government. Don't talk to them. To 
this is this guy is a perfect example on why you don't befriend, be nice, trust the cops, think you're your friends, think they're heroes. This guy is the freaking poster child for never talking to the cops. He lost his life savings. That's okay with you? Okay, perfect. Although it's Steven's right to refuse, he gives the officer permission to search his car. I didn't want to come across as being um, non-cooperative. There you go. I must cooperate with, with the government who who is always trying to screw me and take my money. I must cooperate. I must help them. You're a vet, dude. Are you not familiar with the Fifth Amendment? You don't have to provide evidence against yourself. Or combative. So I did what I felt was right, and I was very uh, honest. For oh, good. And how did, that, how did that work out for you? When he took all your freaking money? Very forthcoming. I was also very respectful. And I just wanted to make their job as easy as possible so that I could be on my way. Yeah, I, I always want to make government's job easy so they can fuck me. Really, dude? I mean, I just don't get it. To spend time with my children. Hey, Shane, how are you? Good. Uh, so far, I'm still searching a car, but uh, big bundle of money it says probably at least 200000 Okay, so the DEA, because they have federal jurisdiction, it's easier for them to seize it. And then they give money back to the PD. Uh, so far, I'm still searching a car, but uh, big bundle of money it says probably at least 200000 that interaction shows what's at the heart of the officer's interest in Stephen. He knows that even though Stephen did nothing wrong, the DEA will adopt the seizure of his cash and return a portion of the money to the Highway Patrol for the favor of giving them the case. So they're getting paid a VIC. They get a percentage of the money they steal from you. Out freaking rageous, people. You pay property taxes. You pay taxes when you buy something. You pay taxes when you sell. I mean, you pay taxes for everything, and that's not enough. Government wants and needs more, and you must support law enforcement because they're your friends and they're all heroes. Here's how an adoption works. When state or local police seize cash, cars, or other property, federal law enforcement takes over the forfeiture. The federal agency does all the work and kicks back up to 80% of the proceeds to the state agency that seized the property. So... Let's incentivize highway robbery. Gee, I wonder how that term got hurt. Highway robbery by any money I seize, legal or unlawful, I get 80%. Where's the downside? I get protection and immunity, so I can't be sued. I get 80% of the money. Where is the downside from stealing pesky citizens' money? Out outrageous. In Stephen's case, that would mean the DEA would take control of the cash and seek to forfeit it through federal law, ignoring the important limitations that Nevada law places on seizures and forfeitures. In 2019 alone, federal... Now see, there are states that pass laws that local law enforcement will not cooperate with federal authorities, like Texas just passed one on gun laws. Local law enforcement is prohibited from assisting federal agencies to support gun laws for the feds, they could do the same thing and protect their citizens. Once you get the feds in your freaking state, you can't get rid of them. And they're going to take control and they're going to keep giving you money so they maintain control until they want to do what they want to do. And you can't say no because you're in debt to them because you got used to living off fed money. Outrageous. Federal agencies made $334 million in equitable sharing payments to state and local law enforcement agencies. In this case, the Nevada Highway Patrol stands to gain nearly $70,000 by taking Stevens' money. I think you're a, good guy. a 70 grand payoff for stealing a guy's money, for driving good, for being a good citizen and cooperating with law enforcement, for allowing you to search his car because he has nothing to hide. I always hear that. Why wouldn't you cooperate if you have nothing to hide? So he lets you search his car and he lost his freaking money. Outrageous. Oh, good, good. Huh. Also, how much cash is that? About 100 grand. 100 grand. Yeah. So, as you know, right, I'm a vet, he's a vet, you're a vet. It's not illegal to carry currency. He tells him, it's not illegal, but I'm going to steal it from you anyway. Watch this. It does go make us ask some questions on why someone has 100,000. I can understand why you don't trust banks, especially in this. Remember, this guy didn't commit a violation. He was pulled over and detained unlawfully because he was driving good. I, this guy mentioned something about following too close to cover his ass. Again, the vehicle code has over, you know, probably 5,000 violations. 
So no one drives without. I love it when people come here and want to argue with me. I drive good and I don't get pulled over. You're full of shit. If I want to pull you over as a cop, you commit a violation. Nobody drives in this country without committing a violation. You cannot drive from point A to point B without committing some violation. If you don't think it's true, make me a bet. Right now. Steven keeps his savings in cash. Maybe that's uncommon, but as the officer acknowledges, it's not illegal. I have nothing to hide from you. I appreciate that. Um, give me a few seconds. Can I make a couple phone calls? Right. Um. The officer first calls his superior. He interrupts that call to speak again with the DEA agent. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting to hear back from Shane to see if he comes out here. This is a, um, it's a strange one, but not a strange one. Uh, strange one, but not a strange one. That means I want the money, but the guy really didn't do anything wrong. That's what that means. Consent to a search. Said there's money up there. We located what it says is $100,000. It's in a uh, uh, Ziploc sandwich baggie. Um, there's also, I haven't gone into it a bunch of money. Back there's a bunch of bank receipts. This guy has all receipts. I tell people every time I take money out of the bank, I keep a receipt. Because the way the government gets your money is they say you can't prove where it came from. So if you have an automatic payment or you deposit your money, when you take it out of the bank, you get a receipt. You need to keep that receipt. That way you can always trace back the money you have to having a legal thing. Asset forfeiture was originally designed when we had people with no jobs, no bank accounts, illegal, should be in the country, and they're driving around with $200,000 in cash. So that's how it got started. Again, all government things start out to protect people for national security, and then it turns into the rape of the citizens. See some stuff in there as well um, to show the, the current status of Shane Warren. It's a shame we're talking about. You notice the cop handles the drugs or the money and the receipts before his dog alerts on it. So since there's no way to know what the cop has touched and what he's transferring to the money and receipts, maybe that's what the dog alerted on. Around 20 minutes later, the officer's superior, a highway patrol sergeant, is recorded on his body cam chatting with the same DEA agent who apologizes for not being able to make it. Uh, no issues. It's too easy to do an adoption. You know, we contacted you, so I think everything's going to be okay. Um, and I'll, I'll text you the, the money count after we get it. It'll probably be a couple hours. He already knows he's taking his money. Remember, there's still no probable cause to seize Stephen's money. All the officers have is a large amount of cash, and cash is not a crime. But the sergeant isn't giving up. So why, why did this question? Did this question? Just... More questions, more talking. Just keep cooperating. I'm sure if you cooperate, they'll just let you go and let you keep your money. Wrong. Go for it. That's just, that's just my, it's my reasoning, it's my personal thing. Oh, I'm not saying that. Uh, like, it's, it's, it's not usual. After questioning Stephen, the sergeant speaks privately with the officer who pulled him over. What are your thoughts, Chris? I, I, I have leaned more towards, um, it, it's odd, but... It's odd, but it's not packed. It's like not, no, and, and he's answering the question. They both think that it's odd, but he answered the questions, and it's not packaged like normal drug money. They left out the part... He's got freaking receipts for it all, you dumb asses. There's, there's receipts here, and it. it I would oh, like to put. Say it. Sorry. I would like to put um, the dog on the currency now. Okay. So the sergeant says, "You know what? Let me try the dog. Look, man, I worked a dog for freaking 20 years in the military. I know what a freaking dog can do and not do. I can get my dog to alert on anything from a piece of paper to freaking pound of dope to a pound of chicken. I can get my dog to alert on anything." That means absolutely nothing. That is another abused tool in law enforcement. Okay. The two officers agree that Stephen has been forthcoming and has years worth of bank receipts showing that he has withdrawn his savings from his bank accounts. But the sergeant orders the junior officer to put the dog on the currency. The sergeant puts Stephen's money in an open Ziploc bag and throws the open package to the ground on the side of the road less than 40 yards from Stephen's car. How do we know who touched the bag? Now we have the officer that's counted the money and we have the sergeant. Did anybody see if they cleaned their hands before? Do they handle drugs? Did they put it in a car? Uh, were they using the same gloves that they searched a guy earlier with drugs? Maybe they cross-contaminated the money with the drugs. Out freaking rageous the way this is just being railroaded nowadays. Nice. He gets his little toy, meaning he responded on the money. Uh, go forward. Okay. 
This positive alert appears to have given the sergeant what he thinks he needs to take Stephen's life savings. Remember, both officers have planned all along to hand the money to the DEA. They are looking for legal justification. But numerous studies have shown anywhere between 67 and 100 percent of U.S. currency has trace amounts of drugs. So this is where government will start saying, you know what? In order to protect you citizens from being a victim like this, we need to do away with currency and only have digital currency. That way you won't worry about losing your money because we know digital currency uh, will help us protect you. See how government creates a problem and then gives you a solution which gives them more power and you less freedoms. For that reason, a dog alert to currency on its own does not show the currency was used in an illegal drug transaction. What we're going to do, I believe there's drug proceeds dog alerted to it. I believe they're drug proceeds. Really? That is fucking bullshit. I mean, when I'm doing a drug search, I'm looking for scales. I'm looking for packaging material. I'm looking for what's called pay and O sheets to where you're saying, I bought the dope for this. I cut it and I paid out this much. I have this much dope. I have this much money. You keep receipts and logs on who owes you money and who you sold it to and how much they. So there's always what's called pay and O sheets, scales and packaging material and no bank receipts. That's how you tell money is used for drugs. Not like these fucking idiots in Nevada. You guys are both a freaking disgrace. You un-American freaking tyrants. Drug proceeds? Yeah, it's very common for We get people that are crafting marijuana, marijuana from Northern California, all states east, even from Reno. Sir, I can tell you right now. There's... I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen, okay? We're gonna... I don't want to hear what you say. I'm taking your freaking money. Shut up, pesky citizen. See, you were helpful, and you let us search, and you wanted to be cooperative. Let me show you how this shit works. Punk citizen. Seize it today, but that doesn't mean we're the final judgment on it. It's gonna go through the DEA, okay? So the DEA will contact you, and the DEA will, will uh, provide you with a means to, um, to fight it. You're gonna have to provide your, your pay stubs. You're gonna have to provide, provide your other receipts and stuff like that, okay? Stephen now has nothing. He had to convince his brother to wire him $1,000 to continue his trip to see his daughters. I just wanted to know. I know you just don't need to help. I'm only over for you. He's still being nice, these assholes. They just fucking robbed him of his money. And he's still saying, I know you're just doing your job. Wow. I wonder if people, when they were being put in stoves, being burned and say, hey, man, it's cool. I know you're just doing your job. I wonder if that's how, how it works. Well, here, just get on the train. Okay, it's cool. I know you're just doing your job. I swear Americans just have lost the will to fight a tyrannical government. I know you're just doing your job. Yeah, I just want to be cooperative. Hell, why don't you just give them a card? Why don't you give them your kids? Why don't you just pay them child support? Because they're just doing their job. I mean, they're just heroes. We should like them, right? We should support them. We should think they're good people. I'm fucking so tired of cops, man. With a number to call the DEA agent. This is all I get here? That's what you get, yes sir. You're gonna get noticed in the mail as well, at that address, okay? I find it even more so concerning that if this could happen to me as a combat veteran who served overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan, this could happen to anybody. The fact that you're a combat veteran overseas means absolutely nothing. You're an uninformed citizen because you still believe that government is your friend, you can trust them, and that cooperating with government will somehow help you. After six months without his nearly $87,000, Stephen sued the DEA in federal court to get it back. Yeah, luckily he sued because he had somebody suing for him. How do you get money to sue if the government takes all your fucking money and then you pay that money, even if you win, you still get back less because you have to pay the attorney. It's bullshit. Only then, after the Institute for Justice filed a lawsuit on his behalf, and the Washington Post called the agency for a comment, did they agree to return Stephen's cash. Stephen may have gotten back his money, but his case goes on. Stephen and the Institute for Justice are also suing the Nevada Highway Patrol in state court to make sure that this doesn't happen to anyone else. Stephen's situation isn't unique, but he is one of the lucky ones. He will get his money back. Most victims of forfeiture don't have a public interest law firm like I did to take their case. And if they cannot afford an attorney and cannot figure out how to navigate convoluted forfeiture processes on their own, the government walks away with their property without ever having to prove any crime. This highway robbery must end. It is time to abolish civil forfeiture.
absolutely outrageous, people. I, I mean, this just offends me on so many levels. Uh, thanks to Institute of Justice. Good job for them. Uh, I, I think they're doing pretty good work. Unfortunately, uh, government doesn't really care um, what, you, what you think until they have to pay out money. All right, we'll end that there. Outrageous. Remember, support your local police. They're heroes. They're here to help you. You can, you can call them if you need help. Outrageous.